Hi guys, I'm Bob from Hawkwork Hardware and today we're going to take a look at how we put together the interface board kit. So I hope you find it helpful. Okay, so first of all we want to identify the various parts of our kit. So we've got the MIDI socket here, we've got obviously the printed circuit board, we have the single resistor and then we have these two resistor packs and if I zoom in on one of them you can see hopefully uh, on the left hand side here there's this small dot um, and that tells us which way round we need to put it in the board because what this thing is it's seven resistors and one end of each of them is connected to this pin which is identified by that dot so you can see from that that it needs to be the right way round for it to work so um, that's the first thing to look for is that dot on those um, and then the last bits of the kit we've got are these header pins here um, which we snap off uh, into the right sizes to fit into the various holes around the board. So first thing to do is to solder the resistor packs onto the board and we'll take a look at doing that now. Okay, so the first thing to do before we solder anything to our board, um, this printed circuit board is just copper on one side uh, and it oxidizes all the time that it's in the air. So as with any other kind of soldering operation, it works best if the surfaces are nice and clean. So what I'm going to do is I've got a, a very fine piece of emery paper here, or wet and dry. I'm just going to fold that in half and I'm just going to give it a little rub over whereabouts we're going to be soldering. So where all the holes are in the board. I don't know if it shows on the video, but that's coming up all nice and shiny now. And that's going to make it much easier for us to solder to it. So there we are, that's the board um, all nice and clean now and ready to solder onto. Okay, so now we can take our resistor packs um, and solder these into the board. Now, um, we did mention earlier this little dot which is on the left hand side as I'm holding this here. I don't know how clearly you can see it in the video. Um, but they go in these two uh, positions here. So if I hold that up for the camera a little bit, um, hopefully you can see the MIDI socket goes up on the uh, on the left hand side here um, of the board and um, these two resistor packs just sit into those holes there so uh, you've got the four rows of holes here then a resistor pack then the long row of holes then the other resistor pack um, and as you look at the circuit board with the MIDI socket on the left, the little dots on the resistor packs have to be on the left hand side as well. And it's very, very important that they are on that side, because if they're the other way around, it won't work. OK, so the tricky part now is to actually turn the thing over without the resistor pack falling out. OK, so I've got uh, one of those in there now and I'm going to try and zoom in. So, we have our pins th coming through the holes here. Uh, so the easiest way to go about this is to get some solder and just tack one of the pins to the board. Doesn't matter which one. Right, there we are. So that now is enough just to hold that in. Um, so you can see I've tacked one end, I've still got the other pins to solder. Um, and then we'll get the second one in. So I'm just going to go ahead and solder this first one in place. Okay, so that's the first resistor pack in place. Okay, and now we do exactly the same thing with the second one. So we just tack one end and that will hold it in place, I can now go ahead and solder the rest of the pins on. OK, and that's our two resistor packs soldered to the board. Now, um, the reason that I suggested that we do the resistor packs first is because if you start with the lowest or the smallest components, uh, when you flip the board over and lay it down, uh, the weight of the board on top of the component will keep its, its legs sticking up through the board. Um, so it makes it nice and easy to solder. If you put the taller components on first, uh, then obviously when you turn it over, the small components are just going to fall out unless you keep your finger underneath and hold them in, uh, which usually ends up with you burning your fingers. So it's much easier just to do the smaller ones first. So that's the two resistor packs done. I'm going to move on now uh, and solder on the single resistor. Um, 
So that actually goes on <coughs> the uh, left hand side of the board over here by the MIDI socket. So uh, this is quite hard for me to see the screen and the board at the same time but basically between these two holes here um, this is where the socket goes. Uh, so between those two holes is where we need to put our resistor. So I shall put that into the board. We just bend its little wire ends over. It doesn't matter which way round this one goes. And we just pop it into those two holes there. Oops. There we are. Just pop it into those two holes so that its wire ends go through the board, turn the board over and then with these, because they're a bit longer, um, we just angle them away from the holes a little bit uh, so they're, they're a bit of an angle and that's enough just to hold that in there whilst we solder it. So again, uh, same as before, just solder one end just to hold him on and there's only two pins so just solder the other end at the same time. Okay, having soldered the uh, resistor to our board, we've now got these um, long pieces of wire sticking out, so we just take those off with a pair of wire cutters as close to the board as we can, so we get a nice clean finish. So that's it, that's the resistors connected to our board. Now we've got our single resistor here and our two resistor packs over there. Um, so the next thing to do is to put the, um, the header pins onto the board. So <coughs> these come in these long strips here, uh, as you can see, and they need to be um, cut down or, or snapped off um, at the right length to fit the board. So if we pop one into where it's going to go, and we find the end, and they're, they're very easy, there's, um, there's, there's little bits next to the pins there, so you can just snap that off just like that and then that's now the right length to fit in that section of holes on the board. So again if we flip the board over and we just use the weight of the board to hold it down so that those pins are, are now in place and just as we did with the resistors we just put a, a little tack of solder on one end like that that's enough to hold the pins in place now and we can go ahead and solder all of the others. Okay so I'm just uh, soldering these um, header pins onto the board now uh, and I don't know if you can see uh, what's happened with this one but um, if, if you look at this on, on the left hand side here it hasn't gone right down there's a little bit of a gap underneath um, and that's a bad thing. You need to make sure that that doesn't happen when you're soldering them on. Uh, if it does, you need to um, to turn the thing upside down, push the pins uh, through whilst you heat the solder up, um, and just make sure they're right down. Now, I've actually um, done this. This is this is with the uh, the first part of the uh, the set here. I've just tacked one end down, um, and that's happened. So what I'm going to do is to um, to heat that solder up, melt that solder again, and just push the pins through, because it's very important that they're right down against the board. If they're not, what can happen is that when you um, push the encoder module down onto the board, those pins can actually bend, um, and, and that's a bad thing, because obviously they won't go in the holes properly. So I'm just going to fix that, and then we'll have another look. Okay, so those pins are nice and flat now, close onto the board, uh, as you can see there, hopefully. Uh, and if you look at them from above, the other thing that's important is that they're all nice and straight in a, in a line vertically. Um, because bearing in mind that you're going to plug, certainly these ones in the centre here, you're going to plug the encoder module down on top of them. So if they're not all lined up nice and straight, then what will happen is that as you go to press the encoder down, they'll just bend out of the way. Um, and you'll end up with some making contacts and some not, which obviously is a bad thing. So it's worthwhile just paying a little bit of attention when you're doing this and making sure that they're absolutely right at this stage. Okay, so I've now got one end of all of the uh, pins tacked into place and they're all nice and straight. Um, and, and so that's good to go. If I turn the board over, um, 
you can see I haven't soldered all of the joints yet but just one end of each set of pins and the reason that I've done just one end uh, is to make sure that when we look at them from, uh, from the side there that they're all nice and straight um, and are all in the right place um, so that uh, it's just nice and easy if there are any that are a problem all I have to do is unsolder one pin uh, to sort it out so that's everything on the board now except for the MIDI socket uh, that's over here that's the next thing to go on so all we do with that is uh, just line it up and pop it through the holes and then solder that on as well so I shall get on and do that now okay so that's our board fully populated now everything's on the board uh, and ready to go um, it's still only tacked on um, the MIDI socket I've just put on as you can see I've only soldered one of the connections there um, so all I need to do now is just go around the board uh, and solder all of the other pins um, to the copper. It's worth noting just at this point that uh, when you do solder onto this copper um, it's it's actually very small and very thin. I don't see, uh, I don't know if you can see how well it comes out in the video there um, but you can see that they're, they're actually quite small copper tracks and you have to be careful not to get them too hot with the soldering iron and not to put too much pressure on them because if you do uh, they'll actually lift away from the board so um, it's it's kind of one of those things if you don't get it hot enough the solder won't run but if you get it too hot uh, it can lift the copper away from the board so you just got to be a little bit careful there's a bit of a knack to it but uh, there's quite a lot of pins to solder so you'll pretty soon get the hang of it so I'm going to get on and solder those pins all onto the board now Okay, so I've finished soldering all the pins together. Uh, that's what it looks like, um, the, the finished article. Uh, you can see there's quite a lot of pins on there, but they're all nicely soldered. Uh, it's important to make sure that there are no um, solder bridges between any of the pins. Make sure there's no shorts or anything, um, because obviously if there are it won't work properly. Uh, but that's our finished board. Um, so you can see everything's all nice and straight uh, and all ready for the encoder module just to pop onto the top of it. So that's pretty much all there is uh, in putting one of these boards together. So that's all there is really to putting one of those little kits together. As you can see it's very very easy, um, just a little bit time consuming simply because there are so many pins to solder. So if you fancy having a go, the kits are for sale on the website. Uh, they're actually half the price of the uh, fully assembled board, so if you are confident with the soldering iron, it's worth uh, having a go with the kit. Um, but either way, I wish you the best of luck with your Hawk to Work project, and until next time, I'm Bob for HawkToWorkHardware.com.